Today we get one of those wonderful readings from St. Paul. St. Paul who can be somewhat confusing at times, right, Robin? Incredibly, he has a circular logic. St. Paul's logic and much of the logic of the time is very different than our own. They don't necessarily operate by a, a, a singular uh, linear trajectory, but rather in a circular trajectory that they do. But Paul gets into a very important point within this reading today, and it's one that I feel is worth reflecting upon today. It's that line that he says, and it's quite familiar to us, it's when I'm weak that I'm strong. It seems to me we live in a time in which we take great pride and power. We take pride in people who tend to be bullies. We exalt the mighty. We raise up people that are loud and obnoxious. I'm not going to mention a president of former history. <laughs> <laughs> But you are actually seeing it on play at this current moment south of the border. One character is considered weak, another strong. One is loud and obnoxious, the other quiet. But Paul finds extraordinary difficulty with this approach. Now, it's not necessarily obvious to us at first why. And he doesn't actually come out and straight directly and say why. But I want to step back here and take a look at, share something of my own life experience here. So as some of you know, I was not born in Canada. I was born in the, in the US, particularly in the state of Minnesota, which if you think our weather gets harsh here, <laughs> Let me tell you, in Minnesota, weather is a very different creature in its own. During the winter, we can get as cold as minus 40, minus 45, to the point that one day my mitts stuck to the steering wheel when I was trying to start the car. And during the summertime, it can get up to about 40, 45 degrees and humid. Great temperature changes. It's because of that weather that many of us think that many Minnesotans tend to be quite stoic. Because you learn how to survive in a climate that's quite harsh. Not to mention that most of us are either German or Swedes, which makes it even more stoic in the long run. And we take pride in being these strong people who can endure everything in life. And I took this on in my own life, to be honest, in that for the longest time I thought, in order to be strong, I need to project an imagery of strength. I need not show fear or sadness or struggle. I always got to show myself strong, no matter how hard the situation may be. You know, we joke about British not having great range of motion. In Minnesota, somebody, if you had a tornado and somebody said, how are you, you would say, I'm fine. You know, that was generally the response you gave. There was always a fear of weakness. You see, if you came across weak, you came across as incapable, unable. It wasn't until a few years ago, shortly after I was ordained a priest, I went through an experience that none of us expect these experiences, but I found out that I was diagnosed with cancer. And it was such a hit to me, a blow to me at the time. Because everything, I was just so happy. I just got my first parish as an incumbent. I thought the world was going grand. And suddenly, out of the blue, I get hit with this news that I have cancer. And that I had to immediately undergo surgery to remove the tumor. And overnight, my life completely changed. Everything just went upside down for me. And as soon as I came out of the operation, for several weeks there, I was quite ill, quite sick. 
But initially, I refused to accept that. Initially, I thought I could be strong, so much to the point that two days after the surgery, I decided I was going to clean the house. <laughs> Why is beyond me? Because I thought I was strong. And as some of you probably guessed, within about five minutes, I was down on the couch, completely exhausted. And I wasn't necessarily willing to share with others that I was struggling, really struggling during this time. Because the things that I used to be able to do, I could not do during this time. And eventually, I had to accept it. But I discovered something incredibly profound in that experience. I literally encountered the grace and love of God. By allowing myself to be weak, I allowed others to care, to love, and to offer grace. By allowing myself to be weak, I actually allowed God to approach me in ways that I could hardly imagine. And in those days and weeks as I was recovering from that operation, they became some of the most holy and profound moments in my life. My prayer life took a complete turn. It became incredibly rich. Because all the things that I used as barriers to protect myself, to give this image of strength and power, were removed that God could actually now do God's great work within me. And over time, I discovered something much more powerful, and that was God and God's grace. See, we humans sometimes, I think we get incredibly filled with pride in which we think we can do everything on our own volition, that leave us to our own will, we can actually do it. But that's not giving room for God and God's grace to intervene. Rather, it's putting up walls and saying, God, you stay there and I'm here. By admitting that we are fundamentally weak and in need of grace, we allow the power of God, the love of God, to work within us to transform that weakness so that we may become strong. If you talk to people after crises, people that have gone through any major tragedy in life, if you talk to them a few years after the event, they will often say to others, and I've expressed this myself as well, they will say to others that that time of crisis or difficulty became the greatest moment in their life. And I think that's telling, and I think we should pay attention to that more. Because it's pointing to this reality that God is actually able to do God's good work within us. When we remove all that prevents us from entering into this deep and abiding, loving relationship with God, when we allow ourselves to truly be naked before God, and allow God to love us as the persons he's formed and fashioned from the clay. Again, what is this, the fourth week now? I'm so struck by how our readings speak to our own experience. I'm seeing this take place within our own congregation. That despite this horrific tragedy that has taken place over here, I can tell you, you have become stronger than ever before. I've seen grace work in and through you. There have been so many powerful moments in the past three weeks where the grace of God has been living and active here that I've often shared with friends, we are standing on holy ground. 
what may seem to be a loss, what may seem to be an utter devastation, actually is becoming the place of new life. Now granted, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. But even the greatest trees, like the oak tree, for example, didn't become great overnight. It took centuries. And at one time, that little weak seed, by God's grace and by God's care, grows to be strong. The same with us. The invitation that I'm offering to you today is to allow yourself to enter into your humanity and into your weakness. Allow God to speak in and through that and allow each other to speak in and through that because God works through each of us. I hope you know that. Allow God to work in and through that weakness. And I will tell you, you will encounter a grace and a power far beyond your imagination. Perhaps in five years, ten years, who knows, we'll be standing in a beautiful church over there. But that's not going to be the great story. The great story is you and God's work of grace in you here and now. The beautiful cathedral is you. Grace and redemption at work within us here and now. Amen.